I'd just like to, first of all, just welcome you to Kindfest 2022. Um, you know, Stephanie Hill, you're absolutely an amazing and inspirational person. And um, you know, just before, you know, we start off, I'd just like to say I read you know, some of your, you know, Heads Up program. And um, especially, you know, someone like me is going through like their exams currently. It's just like, especially the module two and, you know, calming and stress is just, it really does help. And, um, you know, I've also connected with it quite a lot as well. So, yeah, I'd like to commend you a lot for that. And, um, yeah, and, you know, I'd like to hear a bit more about you, if that's okay. So if you could tell me a bit more about, like, your inspiring journey and how you came to where you were today. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. And th thanks so much for that feedback. I really, really appreciate it. It's brilliant. Um, so I guess um, to sort of my story in a nutshell really was um, it kind of started when I when I did my first my bachelor's degree 25 years ago. Um, it was in psychology and marketing. Wow. And after I graduated, I went to work in Southeast Asia. I was teaching out there um, with my then partner. And after uh, we were teaching out there for a couple of years and then we were traveling around and we were caught up in the Boxing Day tsunami in 2004. Um, unfortunately, my, my partner was killed uh, and I sustained life threatening injuries. Um, as a consequence, I, after I healed physically in, in Thailand, I came back to South Wales, which is where I'm from, um, and I developed post-traumatic stress disorder, so terrible debilitating feelings of anxiety and, and trauma. And I went to get some help from uh, the local health service uh, from my GP and, and asked if I could have some support. But unfortunately, there wasn't the resources there at the time to, to, to support me. So I was told that I would need to sit on a waiting list that would take at least 18 months. Um, and I was also offered antidepressants. Now, I'm not I'm not against antidepressants in any way. I'm very pro-choice. But for me, I wanted to see what I could do first. I wanted to see how I could sort of work with myself. Um, and I sure was not going to wait around for 18 months to start feeling better. So I went on a bit of a healing journey, shall we say, myself. I built on my psychology degree. I went off and I studied mindfulness, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, neurolinguistic programming, um, and then solution-focused hypnotherapy. And through the years, I was able to sort of apply the things that I'd learned and was able, thankfully, to overcome PTSD. Um, simultaneously, I then went and did um, a, a master's degree in disaster management and sustainable development. And I went to work in the humanitarian sector. So um, training people who are responding to disasters in the humanitarian sector and in international development. Um, along my journey, um, uh, my two worlds kind of collided in a happy way and people started asking me to deliver courses on well-being. So I started doing a lot around staff well-being and loved it and had a really great response. Um, so fast forward to seven years ago, I, I became self-employed. Um, I was a, a mum for the first time and became self-employed and I decided I'm going to do everything that I love. Um, so I continued working in the humanitarian sector, which I still do today as a consultant. Um, I work um, with big international organizations and UN agencies. But I also developed a company called Happy Headwork. Um, so we, we began that at the beginning, Happy Headwork focused primarily on helping staff who worked in the caregiving sector and um, helping them with their emotional well-being. Um, and then it grew and grew. And eventually I, I brought on board um, a small team. So we have two clinical psychologists and another therapist. And we've recently recruited um, an outdoor education expert as well, um, because we're about to launch an outdoor program, which I'm really excited about. Um, last year, we um, developed um, another arm of the company, which is a community interest company arm, which now allows us to get funding to support individuals in the community so wow. we're not just working with organizations we work directly with individuals now as well um and it's brilliant it's opened so many doors for us in terms of our reach um so we help them through as you really kindly said our heads up program is our, our most successful program actually um and that's um 
a five part series that's online or face to face. And then it's followed up by coaching with either myself or one of my colleagues. Yeah. Generally, people will have like three coaching sessions, which will help them to embed what they've learned. Um, yeah. And um, as I said, as I mentioned, we're um, just about to launch an outdoor program. So helping people to connect um, and to increase their well-being, but in an outdoor classroom environment. And we can do that in either rural or urban settings. So, um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, because I feel like um, when you can sort of like connect with nature, it sort of just like improves your mental well-being like automatically as well and um um and i do you know connect quite strongly with you know what you stand for because um i know a lot of people who have mental um struggles and you know might not be going through the best time in their lives especially now with covid i think what you do is more important than ever and it really does help people and um i remember when um I was just, uh, I was doing something, you know, for my school project in health and social about mental health and um, how, you know, as you said, like the waiting lists for, you know, to get support by um, the NHS or get support from, you know, a therapist, it, it takes a long, long time. And that's what makes it even more crucial that people stand up and really make a difference, just like what you're doing. Brilliant. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, those waiting lists are getting longer and resources are getting harder to reach. Um, and really what I, what I should have mentioned as well is the whole ethos underneath Happy Head Work um, is that it helps people to build a sense of self-efficacy, meaning that their belief in their own abilities to be able to support themselves and the mental health journey. But by that, I don't mean to say in one if one minute that 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 decries the support for other services i think at that support is crucial um but with happy headwork what we what we advocate for is for some, um, for some people they come on the courses and that's enough for them it's supporting their well-being and for others they'll come on the course and it will support their journey with other practitioners because it will give them a more of a, a literacy around their own emotional well-being and also the confidence to voice what's going on for them um and so it supports that journey as well exactly and um you know i feel like you know, the NHS are currently getting overwhelmed as well. And, you know, it, we, it's it's nice to have an extra bit of support for them as well because, uh, you know, all the lovely nurses and um, and doctors and therapists, they're, they're all a team and they're really overrun at this stage as well. And, um, and you know, we're kind of in a recession when it comes to, you know, um, you know, the nation. And, you know, we're going through a lot of problems right now. So if I were to ask you, what would you think is... The number one problem that probably isn't getting enough recognition that you'd like you know a bit more effort put into oh gosh do you know what that's such an interesting question because I could give you a list <laughs> but um I want to sort of you know keep this kind of concise and sort of I suppose aligned with what we're talking about and for me what I would like to see more is supporting young young people like yourselves you are our future and thinking about how we're supporting young people in a meaningful way to feel empowered about mental health but not only about mental health per se and mental well-being but about navigating life you know and um, I talk a lot around um uh, supporting young people to be emotionally literate to understand what's going on in their bodies and their minds because it's such a difficult space to navigate sometimes right so just giving them a bit more understanding around that in a way that they can use it um, but also helping young people to be politically literate to be able to understand the impact of choices that we make and and the impact it has on our lives politically um, and then also to be media literate because I feel that, that the, the influence of media, whether it be mainstream media in print or, or in digital form um, or social media, has such an impact on our mental health and our emotional well-being. 
um, and also on our political choices as well, which in turn then will have an impact on our well-being. So I think, you know, it should be f- fundamental in our education system to have like a non-biased approach to this to support and empower young people like, like yourself, you know, um, in a way that's meaningful and useful. And, um, you know, as someone, you know, going through the education system now, I, 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 I agree with what you're saying because, you know, we're not learning enough about what you know the real world has to offer and the stresses and how you can get influenced so easily without really even realizing it and you know every single place you look there's you know something that could affect your mental well-being and and it only gets you know even worse when you leave school as well and um and i don't think um even though the education system there's so much work and effort put into it and you know all the teachers are really you know trying their best and they're absolutely lovely and wonderful i just i still think you know it's very crucial you know to make sure that these um young kids are really educated on you know what social media is about and um the sort of impact it can have on people as well so yeah Yeah, Definitely. Otherwise, that messaging kind of chips away at us, doesn't it? You know, it makes us feel inadequate or, you know, confused about the world sometimes. And, you know, that's not just young people. That's that's through life. That's uh, that's adults, too. But I think in terms of targeting, you know, you, you're our future. So it's it, for me, that's where we really need to put the resources. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, especially when I was growing up, I didn't have the, you know, best time. But, um, you know, I was picked on, I was bullied, but, um, you know, with help from, you know, my family and, you know, uh, charities and organisations like yours, it really does help you, you know, get over that hurdle in, in your life. And it really does, it helps you, you know, learn and get the best out of your education as well. And I think, you know, that's really important. And also, um the main number one thing i think everyone should have and everyone should try and aspire to have is a voice because you know if you can't speak out then you can't really um it it kind of locks off uh, a lot of things that you're capable of doing and um i i believe that the voice is the most powerful thing you can have definitely definitely that fills my heart with joy to hear that yeah absolutely yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, speaking about, um, you know, what we, you know, try and live on, what we try and aspire to, um, you know, achieve. If I had to ask you, is there like a, a quote or, you know, a, a way of life that you try and live by? And would you try and aspire to try and do? I love lots of quotes, actually. I'm a big quote fiend. I've always loved quotes since I was a teenager, actually. I used to have them stuck all around my bedroom. But um, in terms of one that I live by, I couldn't pick one in particular. What I could do is probably sort of identify values that I try and bring into my everyday life. And, you know, and I think, I've again, I've probably got quite a lot of those as well. But if I was to pull out sort of just a few of those that I I definitely try and interweave into my everyday life. I think compassion is probably at the forefront of that. So, and by compassion, it's, for me, it's that operationalizing of kindness, you know, and for me, you know, compassion is defined as um, being aware um, of other people's circumstances and perhaps their suffering and also having an agency to want to respond to it um, and whether that is you know sort of through my work and um, the work I do in the disaster management sector or in in the in the happy headwork um through the happy headwork business um it's about sort of really listening for, for what people need and trying to respond to it or even in my personal life you know I feel like I'm I try to be aware even on subtle cues so if I'm in a party for example and I can see that someone's struggling to join in I will always kind of subtly make a beeline for that person and try and you know try and make them feel included in a sort of not very obvious way um, and I feel that like really drive, drives that uh, that's a real drive for me um, the other one is um, being curious and, 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 and approaching life with quality and um, 
by that I mean sort of in my work everything I always say focus on the quality with my work but also with curiosity so I'm always thinking about different ways of looking at things through my work different ways of approaching it and being creative and always I'm not happy unless I have given it my absolute all and that the person that I'm doing that work with or for is really happy with it you know Um, And I I bring that into my personal life too. You know, I'm a mum and, you know, and curiosity and quality is such a fundamental part of the way I approach that with my son. I always want to bring that magic into his childhood and into my life too. Um, And I think um, finally, um, I think it's gratitude. Gratitude is such a powerful thing. And I'm so glad there's lots of research that is, that's happening around gratitude now as well and the impact it has on our on our brains, on our neuropsychology. Um, but feeling gratitude for the smallest things is what welcomes in the magic, I think, to life. Um, um, brings up those lovely happy hormones um, and helps you think more positively but also helps drive connection with others around us whether that be in a work context or in my personal life feeling grateful for others and expressing that gratitude in in different ways um, really drives that connection. Exactly I I 100% agree and um, no I also think that you know compassion you know you have to really you can't be desensitized when you know you're you're putting yourself out there and you want to make a change and you want to make a different and a real impact you have to show compassion and Mm -hmm. you have to put dedication into your work as well and um, you know as you said you know you've you've done an absolutely brilliant job you know reaching out and um, uh, is there any way that we could contact you? If... Oh, brilliant um yes yes please um so um yeah so we have a website which is www.happyheadwork.org um and yeah um so yeah it'd be great for people to get in contact we run um we run taster sessions for organizations as well and we often um, have funding in place um, for individuals of the community or smaller organisations that um, when we have funding available, we um, uh, enable them to access our services either for free or subsidised. So, um, yeah, reach out anyone that's interested in learning more. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, I'd like to thank you for coming on Kindfest 2022 as well. You know, you're such an inspirational person and mm-hmm. it's people like you it's why we're doing this and why we're trying to spread that kindness and love and affection and you know trying to you know help people just have it a bit easier because the world's difficult and it's tough and we need to be in it together just like a big family and um your prime example of that brilliant thank you so much thank you